Hey guys, Smurf here with the first video actually on my channel. We have some ATP 6 spoilers, which I am excited to show you guys. Um, these are actually going to be three cards, um, two characters, one battle card that I had a huge part in actually pitching to our ATP team during the design process, um, and uh, they managed to make it all the way through. Um, they had a couple changes here and there, some buffs, some nerfs, but as every good card should, it's uh, they need some tuning. Um, these are some aggressive cards with the recent banning of belligerence and end hostilities. We have the game coming back to our tough and bold are relevant again. It's not just um, end hostilities negating bold decks that aren't pierce and um, vice versa for belligerence negating tough. Um, so have. Um, like a support character, a main character, and a battle card that are actually also going to be show supporting the new energized mechanic that we have in the set. Um, so without further ado, let's kick it off with the centerpiece, Big Boy Nemesis Prime, Incarnation of Dread. So Nemesis Prime to start off is an 11-star character with 16 health, 5 attack, 3 defense, and ult mode. He's a melee truck. Um, and then he has um, he loses the defense in bot mode but keeps the 5 attack um, still melee. Um, in alt mode, he has the energized ability. He has energized 1. When a battle card is put into your opponent's KO area, if it was an upgrade, he gets plus 1 attack until end of turn. Um, otherwise, draw a card. So what energized is as a mechanic is it's a effect or it's a ability that st checks your opponent's KO area um, and as long as they have battle cards equal to the equal to or greater than the energized number it will apply that energized effect so um, what that means with nemesis is for energized one the first battle card that enters their KO area won't trigger his ability but the second one and every one after that will trigger that ability um, this ability is actually huge for the character um, it allows lineups in Titan 1 with like Chrome Dome. It just, it's overall card advantage for an aggressive strategy that we really don't see on a lot of characters that doesn't require flipping on a centerpiece. So, for example, if you play a card like, um, for example, the Chrome Dome interaction earlier, you flip Chrome Dome, KO an action from their hand. Now Energized 1 is turned on. So if you play something like a Reverse Engineer or um, another effect that causes a card to get KO'd, it will now either draw you a card if the, for the action or give you an attack buff. So while the Chrome Dome effect initially to turn on the ability won't draw you a card, every future Chrome Dome effect while you're in this mode will draw you a card, which pretty big deal. Um, in bot mode, however, that's when the spice starts. So he is... Um, when he attacks, you may deal a damage to him. If you do, he gets bold too. So while the dealing a damage might seem like a cost, like a pretty big cost to you know hurt your guy every turn, getting bold too on an aggressively slanted character is big. Like five bold two means that you're gonna deal consistent damage, and with a grenade launcher, that's nine bold two. Scoundrels blaster seven bold two. Um, however. Where he's really going to shine is against leader decks, because his energized three, so as long as your opponent has at least three cards in their KO, while he's ban battling an enemy leader, so both on uh, like offense and defense, he gets plus two, plus two. So what you're looking at then is you're looking at a character with double dealer, le like against legend mode stat lines, but he's anti-double dealer and anti-optimus prime against these leaders, because he's 7, 16, 4 against these characters, which means... Now, when you're having that extra damage to get the bold, you're going to be, like, nuking these leaders. Like, if they're in any sort of an aggressive shell, or if you get, like, really good flips, these leaders are not going to be lasting long. So, Nemesis Prime is kind of a new era of, like, aggressive centerpiece characters. We kind of saw it with in last set with the 11 star Herald Galvatron. However, I think in, he's going to lean more towards, like, a direct damage centerpiece, whereas this character is all about just, like, Gur, me nemesis, I'm gonna smash, like, he's just going in for damage. Um, this is, like, I really expect this character to at least see sideboard play against Legends, but I can very likely see this character being, like, a mainstay, just big centerpiece. His stat line is there, his abilities are there. It's actually a very good payoff for the Energized mechanic in this set. 
Um, up next, we have the Captain of Kaboom himself, Warpath, High Caliber Cannoneer. So Warpath is a character who, like, d ignoring the card for a second, Warpath is a character in the game who kind of was done dirty with his Wave 2 iteration. Um, stat line was terrible for the star cost, just really didn't do anything and wasn't worth the stars. So he's a character I've personally wanted to see in the game with, like, in some regard of a playable character. He's an Autobot tank, which we don't have a lot of outside of, like, the Impactor line. Um, so we have Warpath High Caliber Cannoneer. So he's a ranged tank in alt mode and just ranged in bot mode. Um, in alt mode, he's 4, 11, 3. And while that 11 health might seem like a pretty big, um, like, why is his health so low? That's less health than Sea Spray at 6 stars. The 3 defense means that unless you're against Pierce or Burn strategies, he's going to tank a hit. Like, and the 4 attack is no joke either. Like, that's high attack for not having to flip on your 7 star. And Pierce 1 means you're always going to at least deal some damage. Uh, where this guy in this mode really shines, though, is his flip ability, which says when you flip to this mode, the next time you would do non-attack damage to exactly one enemy this turn, instead do that much damage plus 1. So this is an effect that really is only on one other character currently in the game, which is Superion with his... ATP Stratagem, it lets you just amplify the amount of damage you do, which means even cards like Zap can become Plasma Burst with this. And the fact it's on a, the tank mode flip ability means that cards like Hunker Down will amplify this. Um, I can see this being a big player in Classic with Dark Mount and Straxus Lives, where if you Hunker Down Dark Mount and Warpath when they're both in bot mode, you're now flipping them, and you can stack triggers, so Warpath will resolve first, and then you discard one card to deal three damage to an enemy. Like, that's just value. And you get two armors back. So one card plus a discard. So it costs you two cards to get two armors and deal three damage. Like, sure, I'll take that any day. Um, in bot mode, you do lose a defense, but you gain an attack point. Um, so when he attacks in this mode, you deal one damage to up to one tapped enemy. So it doesn't have to be the defender as long as the character is tapped. Um, then your opponent uh, KOs the top card of their deck. So he actually will fuel energized. So with um, all the cards that will care about energized, he is a now a centerpiece that, or not a centerpiece, a support character for these centerpieces that can KO cards over the course of the game. Even if he just gets in like the one swing, you're now a third of the way for like Nemesis, for example. You're now a third of the way to turning on Nemesis. Or if Nemesis is in alt mode, you've now turned on that ability for all your future cards. And the extra damage does add up. So if you, for example, with Warpath, if you flip him to alt mode with Hunker Down to amplify your damage, then flip him back to bot, you now get to deal two to a tapped enemy when you attack because his ability will see himself as the one source of damage. So in general, like his stat line's there for a really aggressive 7 drop. Even, like 5, 11, 2 is better stats than Wave 1 Barrage, who I think is still borderline playable as a 7-star aggro character. And just that tank, being a tank is big for formats like Classic or even odd, like just t tank decks in general have really wanted a good 7-star that isn't named Captain Impactor. And this character is just going to fill the, mo the mold for that those decks. Uh, and lastly, after Warpath, we have a battle card here that is aggressively leaning, which is Fighting Dirty. This card has probably the best art in the set, like, the, and it's got Warpath, so it's Warpath fighting a dragon, like, come on now. Um, so, what Fighting Dirty does is, it is, um, when one of your characters, one of your characters gets plus one attack and bold two until end of turn, so, it's guaranteed plus one attack and then a fight for position attached to it, so, it's essentially a leap into battle, or better, in orange decks. So you get like another copy of Supercharge, essentially, but you're guaranteeing at least plus one. There's no fail, like no whiffing, per se, because you're always getting that plus one. But then you do have to KO this card. So what this means is if your opponent's on an energized strategy, you're now fueling their energized. But to get this powerful of an effect, an aggressive strategy does have to have some sort of a cost, which is the fact that you are turning on your opponent's energized. And hey, if they're not even playing energized, you it really doesn't really doesn't impact like their the downside. It's not actually there, other than you can't use it again unless you know you have some sort of a way to shuffle it back into your deck, things like that. Who knows? Um, this card does have energized to itself, which says it's unaffected by enemy secret actions, 
which means things like Downfall Protocol currently in the game cannot bounce this card, which means in the late game, you really need to have this out. Your opponent just set a Downfall Protocol. You're top decking, and boom, you hit Fighting Dirty. You have Energize 2 on. That Downfall Protocol now reads, cool, this sits here. I'm going to hit you for one, plus one bold two, and there's nothing you can do about it. This card single-handedly will see play in a ton of aggressive strategies. Like, this card will... Like, I think this card alongside Supercharge, maybe even replacing Supercharge in some teams, just getting that extra buff is a big deal. And, like, we already see Fight for Position seeing play. This is probably the evolution of Fight for, er, fight for Position in a non-peer strategy. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this this card single like being a staple in formats to come. This is a very powerful effect. When you have this reckless charge, skillful display, supercharge, like you're gonna be dealing damage. Alright, so those are what I had for spoilers for you guys today. Um, let me know if there's any like any cool effects you wanna like do with these cards, any team lineups you have in mind. Um, and then, like I said, this is my first video, so if you guys have any feedback for me, let me know how to improve it. I'd appreciate it. And until next time, thanks.